All right, so here we go. Here we go. Uh, I don't have my helper today, so you know what? We're going to do the best we can by ourselves, and hopefully everything. Hey, Noob, how you doing, my friend? I'm glad to, glad to see you. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I got a, a, one of the people that asked me on the uh, a question that they can talk about going um, on the live. They said, hey, you know what? We want to know about storage at ATM. We're having some challenges. We, we just want to see what, how do you store it? Do I worry about anything? And um, so I said, hey, well, we're going to, we'll just do a brief story about that. So we did a, I've operated an ATM and anywhere from 100 degree weather all the way down to minus 10. We did a winter, winter festival, which our first mobile event. It was the wind was blowing off the lake. It was we set the thing. It was about ten degrees in a mobile event, and it went down to minus ten that day. Uh, it was miserable conditions, and the ATMs worked flawlessly in that cold weather. I couldn't believe it. I thought they'd freeze up. We had snow in the trailer. The thing was blowing sideways, but the ATMs worked. So, um, you know what? You will be able to store your ATM in anywhere from let's say minus ten, minus twenty, all the way up to hundred, probably one hundred and ten degrees. With no problem. The big challenge is when you store an ATM, what you'll have, what you guys will, you know, from time to time, you might get some mice that want to make a home in your ATM if you got it in a garage or in a storage facility. So that might be an issue. So what I would do is I would, um, I would plug the holes. There's all kinds of little little holes in the back. I plug it with Gorilla Tape, and mice don't like the Gorilla Tape, so they won't eat through the Gorilla Tape. But uh, but as far as any other conditions, you know what? It doesn't matter <clears throat> as far as storage. It should work uh, no problem. So just to keep that in mind, you guys are on. Um, there's no problem with that. All right. So one of the other situations that uh, we had is um, is somebody asked, uh, oh, they asked this week. They said, hey, you know what? We are... Um, we're having uh, an issue. We want to get a bank account and we want to know how many transactions um, are, are we going to do because with the bank account says I only can do 150 transactions and I, I don't know. They're going to charge me 25 cents a transaction over that. Is that going to be an issue? So I said, you know what? Um, uh, let's see. Oh, look at that. Let's see. Anything good, clever to say about the business owner who doesn't want an ATM in their business because – they fear the place is getting broken into. Okay. So, um, you know what, Noob? I know you, you, you said a couple of time, times that uh, what I've done is I just talk against that. I said, look, I said, you're you're showing, you're showing you're, um, telling people to go down the street and your people are coming in your business and now you don't have a cash solution. So usually in that situation, it's a convenience store or gas station who says, look, I don't want an ATM here because I don't want to get, I don't want to get, uh, robbed or I don't want people coming in my store um, because of that. So what I do is I just said, but what you're doing is how much business are you losing by your, you're telling your customer to go down the street. Sometimes I can convince them. Sometimes I can't. And sometimes it always, it always, it's not necessarily that I can convince them, but somebody they know can convince them in that situation. So usually what I do is I get to know somebody who knows them real well. Uh, it might be a purveyor, I always tell you guys a purveyor usually helps, which is somebody who already sells them something like the soda guy or the beer guy or the chip guy, and then they can convince them better than me. For me, they think I got a vested interest, which I do to put an ATM in the store. So I try that out, um, and I just keep keep uh, talking to them, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. 
I had had that situation where they said, you know what? I don't want an ATM because I don't want to get busted into. I would, I would go, I would go, then I'd give up. And then, you know what? A couple months later, I see that there's an ATM in there. I talked to that same store owner and I'd say, hey, what happened? You told me you didn't want an ATM because of, you know, we get busted into. Yeah, we did. But you know what? I still had that fear. But the problem is, is I got people coming in every day and they're asking for an ATM. And so, you know what? I just decided to get it. Uh, we're doing the best we can. I got a camera. I got security. Uh, we put it in the back of the store. So those are the things that you have to talk against. But it is a, a concern sometimes. So just to let you know. So good question, Noob. I, I like that. Uh, okay. Um so here I got, I, I posted this, but um, it says, you know, how much is an ATM? So we get that question asked a lot. So an ATM is, uh, uses 2195 uh, is the cost of an ATM. It doesn't matter if it's a Halo 2 or a Gen Mega. Um, that is, th that's the cost, it, it tw a, Halo, a Halo 2 or Gen Mega 2500. That's 20, 2195. So uh, Noob, if that was helpful, put one in the chat or put one on your phone. I don't know if you can do that, but let's see if you can do that. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So I was going to go back to the bank account situation. So we had one of our customers um, and uh, they were saying, uh, hey, I want to open up an account, and what, what they're, they're only giving me 150 transactions. Phil, I expect that the ATM is going to do 150 transactions. How does that translate? Because now they're telling me it's 25 cents a transaction. If I go over 150 transactions, I'm charging uh, $3. I'm kicking back the store owner 50 cents. Now I got to give the bank 25 cents? I don't understand that. How's that going to work? Well, what we do is we aggregate all the transactions. So if you have one ATM or 100 ATMs, we take all those transactions, we put them into uh, 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 basically uh, like a bucket, and then that all those transactions are deposited one transaction with an aggregate of all the transactions you do. So if you have 100 ATMs that do one transaction that day, that's 100 transactions aggregated into one, and then that one is deposited in your account. So now the most amount of deposits you'll ever have is going to be 30 because you're going to get one every day of the week. And then on a weekend, Saturday and Sunday, they come in on Monday. So the most you're going to do is however many days there are in a week or in a month. So if there's 28, you're going to get 28. If there's 31, you can get 31. So that's how that works. Same thing for Vault Cash. doesn't matter how many ATMs you have. You're only going to get one per day. Okay. Again, you're going to get five during Monday through Friday. And on Monday, you'll get two for the weekend. So the most you're going to do is you're going to do 30. And then if you take money out, even if you took out money every day, you can only take it out more once. So that's 30 for, let's say a month has 30 days. That's 30 transactions of deposits. And then if you took it out five days a week, five times, uh, you know, four weeks, that's 20. So that's 50 transactions. The most you're going to do. So a hundred is, is, is perfect. Okay. Um, Okay, so Noob says yes. Okay, good. Thanks, Noob. All right, so what do we got this one? Let's see. It's good morning, my friend. Good morning to you. Uh, here we got another question is, if a store, if I store my ATM, can I purchase extra hole plugs? So yes. So you can purchase extra hole plugs. So what you do is a hole plug is something that goes in uh, the back of the ATM. You'll see that, like if you have not a show song, on top they have um, – there is, uh, there's a hole usually that you can run the wirelesses through. The, uh, another show song and Gen Mega put both put holes on the top or in the back of the top, so you can run your wireless through. Um, you can purchase those hole plugs. They're usually about I don't know anywhere from five to eight bucks, uh, and then you can purchase that if you want to store those ATMs. You can purchase those. So okay, we got a Facebook user writes in. All right. Okay, uh, so we got that. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. One of the interesting things that happened this week, and what I talk about all the time is we had a store owner who was in business and they had some challenges. And what, what they did is they they said, hey, we're going we're gonna to close the store for a bit. Um, and now what happens is our ATMs in the store, in a restaurant, 
and we want to get it out. It's been in there. We call the the owner. The owners, um, you know, they they fell down. They hurt themselves, but they they referred us to uh, one, a family member, and then the family member says, "Oh yeah, we want to remodel the store." And now your ATM's stuck in a spot. How long is remodeling going to take? Two to three months. Your ATM has been in there. You know what? And in these situations, what do you do? Do you leave it in there? Do you not leave it in there? And so, you know what? Here's here's the situation. It depends if it's a marginal account or not. If it's a great location, then you know what? Take the money out, leave the door open, and leave it in there. If it's a marginal location, you know what? Maybe it's time to say, you know what? I'm going to find another location. I'm going to get that ATM out of there. The store's been closed. And then if you want to go back when they open up, then you go back. And you know what? You keep that relationship going and you, and you make sure that, you know, it still stays in place, the relationship. But, you know, the people say, well, did you violate your location agreement by pulling it out? You know what? The ATM's been down. It's always in your discretion. You know what? You just say, hey, we're going to pull it out. When you guys open up back up, we'll put the ATM back up. Sometimes they never. We have had where in, store owners have the intention they're going to remodel. They go to remodel. They get a little over excessive. They they get a little, I guess, top over their skis. They spend too much money. And you know what? They run into a challenge. Now your ATM sitting in there two months, three months, four months, five months. And so this becomes a challenge. So what you want to do is you want to, you know what? If it's a marginal loca location, you know, take the ATM out. And then if they open up a, back up, I mean, then you can always put it back in. Where my rule of thumb is, is it's pretty much on... I figure like this, two weeks, I can take two weeks of two weeks of a beating. But you know what? After two weeks, we got to make a decision here. Are you going to open them back up or not? If you're not, or you're going to tell me hey, it's going to take two, three months, then you know what? We just pull the ATM out, put it somewhere else, and then we can always put that ATM back. Because at the end of the day, we need to make transactional volume. If we're not making transactions, then it doesn't make sense. All right. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, uh, what do we got? Good morning, my friend. I got that one. Let's see. B says, do you, let's see, do you do locating or do, do you personally know any locators? Okay, so um, we use, uh, and I do, we do it all. Okay, so what does that mean? We go to locations that, you know what, we stop in the locations all the time. Me personally and the guys on our team, we stop in locations. They're opening up a new store. Are we, are, so we look at, Hey, I saw, you know, they're building a convenience store. They're building a gas station. They're building something. We personally stop in. I'm more of a face to face uh, person. I don't, it's harder for me to talk to somebody um, usually on the phone because it, they, we don't ever get the right person and it's not the right situation usually for us to, I guess, close the deal. It's, I'm a more relationship guy. So that's, that's one of the ways we do it. I also use, uh, uh, people who are already doing business with them. Like I said, a chip guy, a, a sandwich guy, um, a, a Coke or a beer guy, a liquor salesman, depending on what venue, if it's a laundromat, sometimes people that sell the soap or the mechanic of the laundromat. We use all those people to help us get bring in leads. And then when the leads come, they give me the leads. And then they say, hey, talk to John over at the laundromat. He's looking for an ATM. Then I talk to John. John, hey, uh, you know, my buddy recommended that you were looking for an ATM. Yeah. And then we usually get the deal that way. So I'm doing that. We, uh, we do advertising. We are involved in some chambers. I tell everybody I've been doing it for over 20 years. I tell everybody and anybody I'm in the ATM business. If you know a guy, sometimes that happens. Hey, I was over here and they're looking, I was at the, I was at this little grocery store and the guy was looking for an ATM. And you know what? I gave him, I told him about you. I said, what's the guy's name? He's like, I don't know, but this is where the store is at. We go talk to them. So we use a combination of everything. I don't just, you know, it's kind of like death by a thousand cuts. I don't just use one form. I use um, a bunch. If that was helpful, put put two in the chat. Put two in the chat, B. All right. Um, let me get this. We got a Facebook user that says, how about extra antennas for the wireless? Yep. Um, most wirelesses come with two. Sometimes they only come with one. They kind of go back and forth with the with with them some um it just depends on what what we do when we sell we sell them with two wirelesses um sometimes uh we we only had in the beginning we only did one but we believe in two two usually works out um but if you sometimes if you go into you put you have a wireless what happens is sometimes the kids in the grocery stores whatever they they bust them they they they, they steal them so you you have to replace them from time to time 
Um, I don't know how much they cost right now. I have to check with our parts department, but I, I could get you guys that. Uh, say two if that, were, that was helpful. Thank you. Who else we got here? Okay, Wi-Fi. Can you do a location agreement before I finish setting up my business before I buy an ATM? Yes. So I highly encourage you guys to, um, so Wi-Fi writes in, I'll say, repeat the question again. Can I do a location agreement before I finish setting up my ATM business before I buy an ATM? So, um, okay, so yes, but no. You have to have your corporation set up or you can't tie it to a business entity. So you got to make sure that your business entity is in place. So, uh, you know, let's call it uh, Wi-Fi's corporation. Wi-Fi's corporation has to be uh, set up because then you, you, what is the location agreement tied to? It's not tied to anything. If you tie it to yourself and then you form your corporation, it's tied to yourself, not your corporation. So you have to form the corporation first and then you can, you can, once that's done, then you can uh, get somebody to sign your location agreement. So if that was helpful, let us know. Okay. AG, hey, Phil, when's a good time to change surcharge amount fee? Anytime you can. Um, I, I would agree with that. You know what? Pretty much anytime you can, but I don't know exactly what you're asking. Um, what we do is a lot of times we'll set it at a lower price, get the business, and then see if we can generate enough revenue. And then if we can't, then we raise the surcharge. Um, that's always a good time. If you're just talking about a nominal in fee, increase in fees, you know what? Right now, uh, everything's going up. Gas used to be $2. Now it's almost three and a half where I'm at. You know what? That costs you more. So you know what? It might be getting, might be a good time to say, you know what? I'm going to raise their surcharge. And keep in mind, you can just raise it 10 cents, 20 cents. A lot of times we raise it 25 cents at a time, but you don't have to. You can stay. You can just do 10 cents increase, um, 20 cent increases. You know, so just keep that in mind. You can do it that way. I'm a big fan of doing 25 cents, but you guys don't have to do that. So if a AG, if that was helpful, let us know. Okay. Uh, noob. On average, how many locations do your students score in their first year uh, with the guidance? Uh, it's, I have any students. Vince, uh, okay, so uh, we have. It just depends on what their level is. It's it's what they want to do. We have students that have got six ATMs. We've had students that have one ATM. So it just depends. And that was six ATMs inside of probably four months. So it just depends on how aggressive they wanted to do and how much and how much they wanted uh and and how much they wanted they wanted to do it and so um the people that w w that bought one they were just happy hey you know what i just like to have that that little bit of extra money um the people have uh six they're like hey i want to i want to build something um to, to add a lot of revenue to my family so it just depends on what they they wanted to do we do help on almost every location and say, Hey, you know what? And that person who had six, there was a lot of times when, you know what, they were coming to me and say, Hey, I want about this one. What about that one? And I was like, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't put it there. You know? So in the, a lot of times in the beginning, and I'm going to be honest with you guys is sometimes the, the student says, you know what, I want to put it here. And I talk against that because I don't, I want to make sure that those are good locations. So even though they're all excited about putting it in a location, try to vet those locations a little bit better so they don't make a lot of mistakes of, of putting an ATM in a spot that's not that's not making a lot of money. So again, it's not how many you got there, it's how much money you're making. So Nuba just want to just keep that in mind. I'd say, have any students not been successful? Yes. Um, we've had uh, a student that, you know what, they, they didn't follow the stuff that we told them. We said, hey, uh, don't do this, don't do that. And they, I can only tell them and I guide them along, along the way. And if they choose not to, what happens is, is the funniest thing. And I'll be honest with you. It's like they buy our program because they want the knowledge of what, of how to do something. And then what we do is we tell them don't do these things. And because it won't result in any fruit. And sometimes I can only say, don't do it so many times. Sometimes they say, you know what, uh, they're going to do it their way. Hey, it's your business. I tell you, you can do it any way you want, but this won't prove the the fruit that you're looking for. And sometimes they don't they don't listen. So and then they do it their way, and then, then later on they're like, "Man, I wish I should have listened." Yep. And then so when that happens, then they say, "You know what? I'm just going to follow what you're talking about." But sometimes, noob, what happens is they think they get excited. What happens is it's kind of like a drug. You get excited about getting a location. You want to put that ATM in there, 
And now you got somebody like myself might say, you know what, that's not the best location to put that in there. It won't result in the, what you're looking for. And then it, it's a, it's kind of a, you know, a, we have to balance that because if they don't, if they, if they put it in a location, it doesn't make it money and they're not happy. So a lot of times when that happened, it did happen. They're like, man, I'm going to listen to you next time. I'm like, okay, well, don't, let's not make that mistake anymore. So that's what happened in that. Um, okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay. Looks good. Wi-Fi. Okay. All right. What else we got? Okay. Let's see if I missed any questions. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Okay. So now here I want to talk about mobiles. The person asked about mobile. So, <clears throat> all right. So we got, uh, so you're welcome, noob. Okay. So uh, we got mobile season coming up. Um, a lot of places are opening up. So that's good. So then people say, Phil, should I buy? Should I, what should I do? Should I put an ATM in the field? Do I hook it up to a battery? How do I get, you know, electricity out there? When you do mobile, uh, mobile in most situations, every, they almost, I've only been in one time and basically fifth, we've been, we've been in business for 20. I didn't start doing mobiles until about the sixth year into the game. Okay. The reason I started doing mobiles is because our transaction value went down in the summer and a friend of mine had, they were having, uh, hold on. They were in charge of the beer tent at the local festival. And they say, hey, Phil, you know what? People are running out of money and we don't have any, You can you put an ATM in, 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 the, in the park? And I said, it's going to go in the field, in the middle of the field? And he said, yeah. And I said, man, I don't. I don't like that. And he said, well, we can, you can put it by the bathrooms. There's, it's, it's got a, uh, it's like an outdoor, I don't know, we have a pop machine there and there's the bathrooms and it's covered. So you can put it there. I'm like, okay. So I, I chain, I chain the ATM to the post and we put it there and we did a ton of transactions. I'm like, holy mackerel, this is, this is great. And then the next year I'm like, Hey, let's do that again. And I, and I built the trailer because I thought, you know what, this makes sense and we'll enclose it and we can lock the trailer up at night. So, and they had nighttime security. They had security, the local, the local sheriff, they had cars there. So I felt safe there at night. Um, and after the first year, it made sense. So um, we did that. Now, what you guys, when you guys get into mobiles, you'll have to make a decision. Well, how do I protect it in the wind, the rain, the sun? Because if you got an ATM and it's in the sun, the sun beats on it. The ATM actually gets really hot and the screen blanks out. It's still there, but you can't see it. So that's a problem. You got to keep it in the shade. Um, when you do this, so they have kiosks out there that you could put your ATM in and then the kiosk is over the top of it and it'll protect them from the wind and the rain and the sun. That's one avenue. You can go to like Dick's Sporting Goods. You could buy a tent and put it on. I don't know those tents are about 150 bucks. You put the tent on and put your ATM right there. Um, you'll have electricity from, you'll have to have a couple of extension cords, but usually when you talk to uh, somebody in, in the venue, you'll say, Hey, I want to be Usually a good spot is by the front door and or the beer where the, where they sell beer. Those two are the best spots. So when people come in the door, they can get cash. Or when they when they uh, usually get beer, they need cash. So those are usually the two best spots in a, in, uh, in a festival to put your ATM. And that's where you would put your ATM. All right. Okay. So here, let's see this, this question. Let's see. I have a location that does not want the unit mounted to the floor. What should I do? All right. So here's the situation is for us, it's a deal breaker. I don't put the ATM in location unless I can mount it to the floor. I, I've lost an ATM because I was silly and I didn't put the ATM to the floor. What happened is they had a nice, they had a nice ceramic tile floor. All right. When we walked in, it was a bar and a restaurant and there was no electricity on the wall where I wanted to put the ATM. So I told the owner, I said, this, this is where I thought we agreed that we we're going to put the ATM in this wall. And they said, I did. And I said, well, I, you told me you're going to have the, the electricity here. And they said, well, I did, but the electrician, something happened and blah, blah, blah. But he's on his way. He's going to be here, you know, in a week. And I was like, okay, here's what we'll do. I'm not going to drill it down over here. This is where the electricity was. I said, I'll just put it here. And then when the electrician comes in, we'll put it over there. So now next week, 
I go there. Hey, there's no electricity. Yeah, yeah, the guy's coming. Okay, next week. And it was two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. And then and guess what? Then it's like I stopped, I stopped going to the location to talk to the owner about this. I just I just asked then one of the guys was filling on like, hey, did they get that electricity? No. And then pretty soon, guess what? I forgot about it. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I forgot. I forgot to ask our guy who was filling the ATM, you know, what's going on. Then all of a sudden, one day, uh, I look and we get it, the ATM's ping every, and it lets you know how many hours, you know, it calls in every hour, lets you know that it's there or not every hour, but every eight hours, it lets you know that it's there. And so I noticed, hey, you know what? This is like Tuesday. I haven't got a call. I haven't got a call in 12 hours. What's going on? So go there Tuesday. Guess what? ATM's gone. So I said, what, what? I talked to the bartender. What happened here? She goes, I don't know. Said, I thought you guys took it out. When did we take it out? We didn't take it out. So we looked at the security cameras and you know what? They had a party there on Monday and somebody, one of the people from the party, basically they didn't lock the door all the way. They came back after they did the party because the bar was closed. They had a party on Monday. It was a, like the general manager and a bunch of the their, their friends. They invited somebody there, maybe a shady character. They... The general manager looked like on the videotape that the general manager walked out like third from the last and the other two people walked out. And when they did that, they left the door a little, a little open. Okay. So, and they didn't set the alarm. They had an alarm. They didn't set it for whatever reason. So what happens is those guys, they come in, they come back in, they left. You could see it on cameras. They left, they come back. They went in the back, grabbed the dolly from the bar, did the ATM. And then, um, I don't know what happened here, but uh, then, then what happened is they uh, they put the ATM, loaded it in a truck, and boom, that, that's it. But it was all on video. We knew who the guys were. That's it. So then they, they went. They arrested the guys. We didn't get the ATM back, but we pressed charges, and they, they had to pay me back. So, And the funny thing is about three years later, I got a call from some guy. He's like, Hey, I'm, I'm here in such, such, such woods. And we were deer hunting. And guess what? Uh, we found your ATM as a reward. I'm like, well, maybe let me see. You know, I said, I'll, you know, I'll give you a hundred bucks. If you bring it back, guy loaded on his four wheeler. They were way out in the woods somewhere. Found our ATM. It was beat. You know, it was, it was two years or three years and weather it was beat to hell. They, they pried it open, whatever. But I got all of my money back. The ATM was shot, but, uh, insurance covered it. So long story, but I'll just let you guys know that did happen. Is this PDQ sell location contracts? AG is asking. So no, PDQ does not sell ATM location agreements. Um, we do sell, uh, we do, we have a course and inside the course, it has location agreements. It has um, bulk cash agreements. It has service agreements. It has mobile ATM agreements. So what we were talking about is, you know what? Um, if you guys need any of that, it's in our document vault. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars over 20 years, and I put that all in the course because that also helps you out. Every time I got beat, every time somebody says, hey, this happened, that happened, I put it in our location agreement, had our lawyer go over it so many times I can't even think of to make it airtight, you know, so somebody couldn't beat me. And so we put that in the course. So, you know what, you guys are getting the benefit of that. We have the course. I want to put the course link down here. I'm going to. I got the course link, uh, you know, here and, um, there it is right there. So if you guys are interested, right, put that right there, but we have the course, um, and we put that in there also the 70 videos. And then I teach you guys, you know, everything that you need to know on the videos. And then there's a coaching call that I can help you out. Now, when you get all done with all that, and if you guys want to buy an ATM, you want to actually get into the business, we sell the ATMs. So we sell them. And then you guys, you will come, uh, if you have a problem with your ATM, you call our service department. And you know what? We can help you and talk you through any any and almost every problem because we've been through it a million times. And when you deal with us, it's not just somebody who doesn't. We're in the business. So it's every day I'm in the business. I see things. I see how things move and shake. And you know what? That's where you're getting the benefit of that. All right. Uh, what's this one? Let's see. Uh, the ATM will be in the front of my customer's liquor store, but the cable modem is in the back of the store. Should I run a cable to or get a wireless. That'll be up to you. Um, and the reason I say it's it depends. Here's what I can tell you. If you run on, on stores, internet, you will have at least one, possibly two service calls a year. So what, what does that mean? That means at some point their internet will go down and they will call you and say, Hey, my ATM doesn't work. 
That's because the store is internet style. Now, the other call you could get is the store will say, hey, let's call it uh, Joe's ATMs or hey, PDQ. Hey, PDQ, you know what? Our, our internet's down. It's your ATM that's causing a problem. No, we're just hooked up into your internet. It's not our engine, but they will call you. You will have to go out and say, no, you know what? Your your internet is down. It's not us. And it's like, well, geez, it worked like three seconds ago. Yeah, now you just drove out to that location, okay? And anytime that their internet goes down, they could call you, and then you will have to go out and see if this is your ATM causing an issue or is their, is their wireless. If their router goes off, you will get a call. If their switch goes out, you will get a call. So those are the calls you will get if you work on the store's internet. And then if you want to run the wire, yeah, you just get a box of CAD5 cable. Um, you can make your ends or you can buy the you could buy the connectors at the at the any of the uh, electronic stores. And then we used to actually run CAD5 cable um, and we would make the ends and we could run it as from wherever their router was to their switch or wherever their router is, and we would probably put a switch and we'd run it to the ATM. So we used to do that. And you know what? We decided that you know sometimes in some most of the situations easier to do a wireless that we don't get the service calls i got to spend a couple of dollars every month so that's an inconvenience financially but it saves time if if you do it that way so it just depends on what you guys want to do i got a facebook user okay uh what else okay crazy story thanks noob all right and what do we what else got should i get insurance on any time how should you expect to pay insurance all right so uh, there is, um, I've only run across one company out there that does the insurance. And right now, unless you got five ATMs, it doesn't, it's not cost justifiable. Insurance is right now running a thousand dollars a year on insurance. And that's whether you have one or five. Now, if you have five, okay, that's $200, $200 for insurance. That makes more sense. If you have one, it doesn't. So what I always say is self-insure until you get six ATMs, then it makes sense. They used to insure, uh, it was $500 for insurance. Now it's $1,000 um, because of what happened in 2020 with all the riots and a lot of a lot of challenges in the, in the business. Um, the insurance companies have now, they're like, well, we, we can't we can't insure. Uh, we have to make uh, some money on that. So that's, that's the situation. The other thing to keep in mind is those insurance companies, it has to be either a 24-hour place or or it has to have an alarm on it. If it doesn't have an alarm on it, they won't insure it. And it has to be bolted to the floor. So they want it to be bolted to the floor, has to be alarm on the location, um, or it has to be 24 hours a day. All right. And what, what's our last question of the day? Due to COVID, what's a good cleaning product uh, to wipe down your ATM? Um, we just been, we just, you know what? I don't, uh, I have a couple, but I don't know off the top of my head what, what they're doing, anything with Lysol I was using on the ATM. But uh, there was, we had a, a cleaning product that was ATM friendly, but I don't know uh, what that was exactly off the top of my head. So I can't give you this specific name. So um, hope that is helpful. Again, if you guys are interested, you know what? In, in the a, we got the A to Z course, and I'll put it right here in the chat. And um, you know what? You guys register uh, today. That would be great. Um, we're going to see you guys next week, but you know what? We we're just trying to add a bunch of value. I appreciate you guys for being part of the, the YouTube community and part of the Facebook community. And you know what? Thank you guys very much. And I will see you guys, um, next week. So thank you.